Welcome to the milk bar. 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 Welcome along to episode 689 of The Milk Bar. Jason Forrest here with you as ever. And coming up on the show this week, we'll be having a chat with Vicky Wright, daughter of Billy Wright. She will be at the Prince of Wales talking all about the amazing man himself coming up in October. Full details on that and a very special VIP treat for those who have their tickets. If you get in there quick, details with Vicky in a mo. Plus, we'll also be finding out about the show Once, which is on at the St Mary's Hub in Litchfield, right the way through until the 17th of September. We'll be catching up with Will Dorrell of Who, Zoo and Dinosaur World as we find out what they have on the way. As we head towards half term, I know the kids are only just back at school and we're thinking about getting yourself booked in for that one. On top of that, Gloria Honeyford will be along to make sure that uh, those who are more senior in years are getting online and saving themselves some cash, which is vitally important in this current time so we'll be hearing how you can do that using the internet and as well as all of that we'll also be hearing what's happening at the lighthouse kelly jeffs joining us for a bit of a natter about their amazing events festivals and the fantastic shows and exhibitions that's all on the way on the show this week <laughs> On Thursday, the 20th of October, there's going to be a magical night of memorabilia and conversation at the Prince of Wales in Cannock. It's all going to be started by Vicky Wright, daughter of Billy Wright, about whom she will be talking. Hello, see, how are you doing? Hello, it's nice to see you, Jason. It's, it's, it's always good to have a catch-up, isn't it? But there you go. It is. You've got me up a bit early, I have to say, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> but, uh, never mind. I'll forgive you, I'll forgive you. I was out late last night, but we did a comedy club in, uh, in Twickenham, so... Oh, we didn't get back till late from that. So it's a, I'm a little bit like... <laughs> but, but, but ever the professional and looking fantastic. You wouldn't know you'd had a late night, to be fair. So uh, <laughs> well, I, I love this bad all the time, but there we go. So um, <laughs> it's going gonna, gonna to be a good one. You're looking forward to it, I know. And this is your chance to talk to uh, people who love your dad almost as much as you love your dad. <laughs> Yeah, if that's possible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible, Jason, because when I, I launched it at Molyneux three years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I think I told you last time, it was because of, of Kelly, my daughter, you know Kelly, don't you? Yeah, I do. And um, Kelly was, um, well, she was the apple of Dad's eye, and she mm -hmm. was only bubble, and he got poorly, and so she only got to, to know him and him, her, for like six months. But they had some, this ridiculous sort of special bond. He had such a way with him. He was gentle, and somehow... His voice and the, his manner with her, she just disregarded everybody else and just turned. I think it was it's truthful to say that um, she gave him really her first proper smile. Because <laughs> we were all a bit like, that's nice. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, so they had a wonderful bond. And for her 25th birthday, I thought to myself, what could I what could I get her that's a bit special? And it, it just was like a, a light bulb moment. I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll do a little compilation all about her granddad and, and what he achieved. And because she, you know, she she doesn't really know the man. She can see the statue and knows that he was a legend. But I thought I'd just put it together with a few bits of Pathé news clips and some info on what he achieved, but what he was like as a man, as a dad, as a granddad, pictures, home movies. Anyway, after about a week of researching his life, it, it was such a magical story. I thought this has to be done on a on a bigger scale, you know. So I put mm -hmm. my heart and soul into doing it and launched it, as I said, at Molyneux, and it was one of the best nights of my life. Packed, packed room in the Jack Hayward suite there, um, sort of with the backdrop, the pitch, you know, with all the lights on, mm -hmm. and those wonderful gold and black colours, and and of course Dad's ashes were there on the pitch, you know, so he was there part of the night. And then a couple of weeks later, I was due to do a couple more I'd been signed up to do, and um, COVID hit. So we were all put put away, weren't we, for, for two years, really. And so that had to be shelved. And I thought, oh, God, I've got to get this going again if I can. So a lovely manager at uh, the Prince of Wales Theatre in Cannock said, I'd love, love to do it here. And I, I think it would really sell. <laughs> it was a 400-seater. <laughs> So, but um, but yeah, it, it, it is fortunate, and it, but it, it's it's tiered as well. So it, it's going to be a nice way for you to bring this story to life and for people to be able to see it because it's great lines of sight. Um, and and, and it, it's going to be sort of a nice, a, sort of a relaxed evening, even though you're going to be there under the lights. But uh, oh, it, it, it's, it, it's like 
it's like a family. Yeah. Person, you know, the, the Wolves fans are like family to, to me, and 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 Dad, it was so in his heart, everything about that that team and 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 where he came from. So there's so much love in the room, and we laugh <laughs> together, we cry together. There's a question and answers in the in the second half where audience can can ask questions, and and we've got some special guests lined up. Bobby Davro, my partner, Bobby is doing the um. The, the hosting of it so he'll mm -hmm. be causing chaos i'm sure and they're having a laugh you know so there's nice banter and it's just as i say it's not even just the football because it's all about the human journey that dad went on that only i can tell having seen it from the other side you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've lived all of this, which is the thing, and, and uh, it must be great. I mean, when you're doing the research around it, because you'll, you'll see things, you'll have seen stuff as a kid as you were going through your teens into your 20s, and the, the, the odd way in which the world looked at the life of your mom and dad, uh, it'd be because they were both major celebrities, and still are to this day. I mean, there are names that are known in the world of entertainment and, and beyond. And uh, having, I mean, was your dad on This Is Your Life twice, once with Amy? Andrews once with Michael Aspel? Yeah, so, I mean, again, Dad did so many firsts, but I think apart from the first man in the world to get 100 caps for his country, that's quite a major one. I, yeah, he was the um, first guy to have it done twice, once in 59, so I was literally just a bubba, and, um, and then 85, I think, with Michael Aspel, so yeah, he was done twice. Wonderful. But you, 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 your mom and the rest of the bevs were done as well, weren't they? Yeah. They had theirs done. Yeah. So, what, I mean, what a magical family. I'm feel so blessed, you know, to have been part of it. I really do. And I, I feel great that I'm sort of carrying the flag and and because talking about him all the time just brings him back into into my life. And this is the way I'm, he's still around. You know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think about him every day. In fact, yesterday was um, was the day of uh, we had to say goodbye to him, third of September. Yeah. So you know, we had lots of sort of thoughts and talks and tears about that. What a day that was in Wolverhampton, you know. Again, the streets were lined with people in the torrential rain all standing there for my dad. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, the, the, the funeral itself, I didn't attend. I was had a bit of a rough time. Literally, I think the, the day after you lost your dad, I lost my gran. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I couldn't face two things like that in the, in the one week. So I, I missed out on, on your, your dad's event, even though I went along to yeah, the likes of Stan Cullis and, and Jack later. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, they are poignant moments, these are. And it, it's amazing to see the way the fans have always come together for those that they have loved. And we... We're kind of in an era now where we're not seeing those sort of people coming through. And I'm not just talking about Wolves or, or our community. I'm thinking yeah, across the board, there, is so, yeah. it, 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 there aren't so many legends, as it were. There are, there are people who've made their mark. I mean, Steve Ball, amazing man, amazing player. Uh, and many, many years before we say goodbye to him, fingers crossed. But, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's yeah. It, 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 since Steve, I can't, I can't really think of, of, of names who are associated with clubs in that way. It is much more of a business than it was was back in your dad's day yeah. it really has changed whether or not for the better I, I don't know I don't know but it's up for discussion that one isn't it but I think you, you do live in your era of it you know and uh, the answers now dad was always the one for the for the young players though he was um he'd, he'd go up every Saturday to watch the the, the youth team play and he all and then when he was manager of Arsenal he he signed all the young lads that went on to win the double Mm -hmm. Even though Bertie Mee, who then became manager, sort of took credit for it. Dad did sign Frank McClintock, Bob Wilson, you know, all the all the big Arsenal players. So Dad loved that. So I, don't, he, I wonder what he thinks. God, I'd love to have a little conversation with him. I you know, wish he could walk in now. <laughs> I know, it'd be amazing. But I mean, we're, we're going back uh, a, a long, a long way, a, a lot of history and a lot of joy, which is the thing. I know. And um, what's lovely about it is because, as I said, it's such a family. The Wolves fans, I think, are, are the best in the world. And it, it's such a, like, my granddad, I get loads of tweets, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to come because my dad was such a fan of yours. And my mum was in love with your dad. Or I met your dad. There are all these stories about my granddad took me and then I took my son. And you know what I mean? It's all this family-orientated stuff. So it makes it like a community. It's not just me stand in there sort of telling the story in a very sort of um, matter of fact way it's 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 like a personal thing with with everybody in the audience because I feel they all remember him know him even the the youngsters that you know don't remember or see seen him play 
he's still that guy, nine foot tall outside the football ground. So he must have been something special to the club, mustn't he? Mm -hmm. and, and that night where the stand was opened and, and he was on the pitch, that's, it still stays in my memory as, <laughs> yeah. uh, as an amazing evening. And, and just the adoration that was there was so deserved, but, uh, you know, and, and, and so much part of the fabric that has been Wolves for, for decades. Yeah, I mean, it was. I was pregnant, um, mm -hmm. sort of three months pregnant on that night. I was, so, I was so sick. I had such more sickness, and I remember I had my head out the car window most of the journey up there. And then we got onto the pitch, and it was, you know, the whole place sort of stood up, and the noise was incredible. And Dad, he did his really touching um, speech, you know, mm -hmm. about what an honour it was and what a privilege, and, and uh, he was so humbled by it. You know, he said, "Why would they let him stand after me?" You know, he was so incredibly sort of humble, I suppose is the word modest, isn't it? And uh, so he's doing the speech, you know, and I was like thinking, Sky Cameras were, Sky News was there, and then, you know, Midlands Today, they're all there. And I'm thinking, I'm going to throw up in a minute. And so I'm behind her. <laughs> and I was in his ear, quick, quick as you can, quick as you can. Not <laughs> good. And so he said, he says, I've just got to say a few thank you, sweet, he said. And he <laughs> literally went three times round the ground, shaking <laughs> hands with every single person in three rows. But that was Dad, and that's why he's so he's he was so loved and still is, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, some amazing memories will be shared. It is Thursday, the twentieth of October. Now you've got something very special for us as well, haven't you? Well, yeah, I'm going to say because we're, um, Bobby and I are going to do a meet and greet before the show, so there's going to be a meet and greet. Um, and an opportunity to get um, Dad's book as well, which we'll sign, and I think a glass of bubbly as well. Um, so what you're going to do, if you get your tickets, if you come to my direct message on Twitter, so I'm Vicky Wright on Twitter, so I think it's Vicky Wright at, at Vicky Wright 5459. So that's actually my birthday, I have to say. <laughs> it says so old, and so 5th of April, 59, so 5459 on Twitter, Vicky Wright. If you direct message me that you've bought your ticket, then you'll get a special password to come in and have the meet and greet before the show, which should be fun. So the important thing is, first of all, get your tickets. Then yeah. if you, uh, are you gonna do this for five people, aren't we? Can we do five, first five people to message me? Yeah. First five people will say to message me. Um, and um, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so the box office, mm -hmm. I've got the number, I haven't got the number of you, but the Prince of Wales, have you got it there, Jason? I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to casually pick up my phone as we have a chat and tell you the box <laughs> office number <laughs> is 01, it's a lot of numbers, it's, it's, it's 01543 578762. My contact lenses are playing up, so I think that's right. I'll get the very focal bit in the right place. 01543 578762 is that box office number. Just nip along to the Prince of Wales website as well. You'll be able to grab your tickets yeah. that way too. And also also on my on my tweet, if you go onto my page, I've got a direct link there. So you can click on that and it goes straight through to the online booking. So that makes that makes things easier, doesn't it? Nice and simple. Get 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 on there. Get that done, and uh, you uh, can be not only buying your tickets to go along for it. It's going to be a fantastic evening. But if you get one of those first five who DM Vicky and give us that uh, Twitter handle again at Vicky Wright five four five nine, and then you can uh, be if you're on the first five and you've got your tickets, then you can go along and have a bit of a meet and greet beforehand, which sounds fantastic to me. I'm going to try and get there before the uh, before the gig as well, so we can Please say hello to a bit of a natter. The so more the merrier. And if everybody, if, if you're there and you're coming, absolutely come and say hello to us afterwards. It's a pleasure to meet everyone and, and hear all their stories. And, and you know, it's it's a real it's a real night to celebrate and, and just and just sort of celebrate and remember him in, a, in, a, in the best way we all can. Yeah, I mean, it's been yeah, so, so much of the, uh, you know, the, the, the times, the memories, the great days of Wolves that, uh, that, that Billy was part of. And uh, it, it's, you know, the, the, the club's got an amazing future as well. And it, it's always interesting to see how these things evolve. But, uh, you know, uh, when it comes down to absolute legends in Wolves history, your dad is absolutely up there. So, Vicky, always good to speak to you. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to having you back in the area on the 20th of October for that event at the Prince of Wales in Cammie. Fabulous. Thanks for having me, Jason. Look forward to seeing you all.
So Mary's Hope in Lichfield is playing host to Once, a new musical. It's running right the way through until the 17th of September, and I have with me now the director and musical director. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. So we have you and Steady and Chris Buckle, and uh, this show in itself is... Uh, it's, uh, it's storytelling, it's, it is music, um, it is uh, a wonderful cast, all of whom have to pick up musical instruments as they go along. So uh, put that together with a two-week production schedule, uh, th this must have been a fun one to create. <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, um, as a show, this is, this is like no musical that I've ever been involved with before, because, as you mentioned, every, everyone in the cast has to not only uh, you know, act, sing, move around on the stage but also uh, play multiple instruments at the same time and that's been um, an interesting challenge to to try and uh, coordinate all of those things all together but um, somehow we managed to, to pull off in these uh, two <laughs> absolutely. weeks and it, and it really really worked which is the absolutely excellent part and Chris where did you find this piece of work to cut to begin with so once once actually so I came across it as a film about 15 years ago myself and my mum bizarrely found this DVD that neither of us had heard of in Woolworths, I think it was, of all oh, places. Oh, back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we took it home and we watched it, and I was, I think, 10, 10, 11 at the time, and we fell in love with the music. Um, and since then, we, we, we really closely followed Glenn Hansard and Marquetta Glover, who, who wrote the music for the film. Uh, and then in 2011, 2012, um, they decided to make it into a, a musical that started in Broadway and then came over to the West End. And we went to see it a few times and fell in love with it again. Um, and in the meantime, I've, I've been a massive fan of, of Glenn Hansard, uh, in particular, and Marquette Glover, and been following their work. And uh, there's something really beautiful about the way that they turn isolation and, I suppose, um, issues with mental health and issues with loneliness, uh, and they turn it into such beautiful and euphoric music and art. Um, and that's and then that's kind of yeah. It, but it, it feels real, doesn't it? And I know yeah. it's your cast who've made it feel real for the audience tonight, but. It, it really feels like you can believe in the characters and it's not some sort of glitzy I'm going to be a star kind of show you've got somebody who starts off as a busker not going to give any spoilers but you, you, you feel there is a, a true journey and story through the music and I think you've created that well here and uh, I, I think that is, is something which it, it has to feel like it's come from an organic point it, it, it can't just be pushed out on stage and, and, and churned out as a musical and, and certainly that isn't what it feels like it, it feels like you really believe in the show yeah for sure uh, um, a big a massive part of casting the show is that we cast uh, we wanted to cast a company of people that understood what this music meant both to the people who wrote it but also the people who listened to it and Phil uh, Phil King and uh, Lucia Carminani who are playing the two leads are both singer-songwriters they've both been through all of this process of busking playing on the streets trying to get people to hear their music and they understand it better than anyone and I think they brought an authenticity to it um, the rest of the cast as well is a massive range of artists from poets to spoken word artists to songwriters to creatives of all kinds directors movement directors and it feels like everyone's really brought their own authenticity to the story um, and bridged that gap really lovely between um, putting on a, a musical that is a musical and it has the precision and has the power of a musical but also has the authenticity and the kind of organic nature that kind of makes it feel more like a, uh, a slice of life kind of feel. Uh, and, and with the a production company as well, I mean, the, 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 this is the sort of thing you'd like to tackle, isn't it? Sure, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's actually, this is, this is the first thing we've done that um, has had some element of optimism to it. <laughs> um, so it's been a strange, a strange process, kind of approaching it uh, from a slightly different outlook. But I think, uh, on the whole, you know, we, we access this story through the mindset of the characters, and the characters at the start of the, the story are, are isolated and, and are lacking a community, and by the end of it, they've built one and they've become different people because of it, I think. And, and you, when it comes to being a musical director, what sort of musical direction have you got in the script because we've had your accordion on stage we've seen drums we've seen uh, you know, the, 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 those thumb boxy things that I can never remember the name of uh, you know, there's been you know, everything from guitars through ukes the lot so uh, it is did you get a cast who could play and you worked out what to do with them or did you, you know, look for people uh, together to, to to find who could bring the music that you wanted to life I, I think um, uh, it was both. Just a bit of both really yeah, yeah. I mean, I, were, I was brought into into it kind of midway through through the stage, and I ended up taking on the, um, you know, the, the, the accordion and um, a couple other bits like that. But um, I mean, there's just a 
a great group of musicians, really. And but that, fleeting and glimpses of some of the instruments, it's like, yeah. hang on, what was that one? <laughs> and I think I get that, that adds to it as well, because it, it is part of the, the, the realness in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, just everyone involved with it has been really great at just uh, picking up a, a guitar for, for just one song and you know, uh, being really diligent in, in practicing their, their parts for that and making sure that everyone's uh, you know, giving the same uh, amount of work into it. I think it's around 28, 28 pieces of music in it, something. Something, something like, like that, that. And I think, yeah. but there were some great callbacks as well though I think mm. and, and the, yeah. the callback in this one has been used particularly well he didn't feel you were hearing the same bit of song again when it was needed it was there and it was actually part of telling that story good yeah. um, one, one thing that we felt was really important um, uh, was the with the music uh, we started off um, you know, showcasing one of the, the leads on their own, and then another one, and then it builds up into the suddenly this, this burst of it of layers the band spirit. through, yeah, yeah that way. Um, because originally it's it's scored to have um, accompanying instruments on on the first couple of songs, but yeah. um, you know, felt it was really important to have uh, just the focus on, on them where they are mm. um, uh, in their, their stages of, of life, and then suddenly the, you know the the main guy character he's brought into this world of music that um, that the girl reveals, uh, reveals yeah. him to. Well, an amazing production. I don't normally have to do the review with half the cast and the uh, the director sat next to me, but it is well worth coming <laughs> along to see. You will be impressed by the whole of the uh, the ensemble, and I, th I think that is the important part. It is an ensemble, isn't it? You've mentioned well, community. Absolutely. It is everyone coming together. And the audience and, are part of that as well. Yeah, yeah. and and and, and yeah, the, there are points where you feel you want to applaud but you can't because it would spoil the story and then there are other bits where you just absolutely have to make some noise and a standing ovation for the first night I think that is absolutely deserved and I hopefully you guys appreciate you know, from, from the audience point of view what you did for us tonight uh, are bringing this story to life so it, it is amazing I'm going to do the difficult bit now though how do we get tickets come on how do, you've got to tickets. do that bit yeah absolutely so we're in a venue called The Hub uh, it's at St Mary's Church in Lichfield um, can't the miss it the big, big, yeah, big building in the market city, square yeah. yeah absolutely and uh, tickets are available on their website which I believe is thehub.co.uk um I'm not sure what that is actually. We need to check. Go Google St. Mary's. <laughs> St. Mary's the hub. St. Mary's, St. Mary's the hub. Yeah, so yeah, the, yeah, but the, it is the hub at St. Mary's. Uh, you yeah. can come along, check it out. But Absolutely. thank, thank you for this evening. Thank you for an amazing show. Have a brilliant time. Break a leg, we have to say, as you head through to uh, the last show on the 17th of September. But it is an absolute must see. Do make your way over here and enjoy it over at the hub. At the thank Mary's. you. Thank you both. Thank, thank you very much. much. Cheers. Cheers. Lots going on at the Lighthouse after a fantastic summer of events. We're now into that period where there's going to be some even bigger festival stuff taking place. Kelly Jeffs is here to let us know what's happening. Hello. Hello there. Good How are we doing? Oh, good to see you too. And uh, yeah. plenty happening. Lots going on. And uh, a, 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 a certain seasons of films as well, which I think is quite intriguing. Yeah, we. Uh, I mean, obviously, as an independent cinema, we have a remit to offer quality films but we also really are really proud of some of the diversification that we make in our program as well and um, we're delighted to um, to to support but also be supported to show season um, that Sal Griffiths one of our um, team has curated frankly my queer it is and it's been funded um, it's been supported a little bit by Flatback and BFI British Film Institute the, uh, the local film hub mm -hmm. um and there are one two three this i think there's five or six titles yet um across that season that starts friday the 9th of september so that's next yeah friday yeah, the week on friday um and um it's a whole mixture of um film titles uh that um you know i'm not going to say sort of it's it's for the lgbt community it's celebrating and bringing stories to the screens that are really screen that's really important um so we're really proud of that so that season starts on um friday the 9th of september and um but our general program as you said uh, uh, you know we've gone through the whole summer of of um releases that, that there hasn't been any it's a mixture really there hasn't been any real big titles there's not there's not been a big um 
I think this whole lag with COVID mm-hmm. has impacted a little bit this summer season where productions came to a halt and then suddenly, uh, you know, um, the taps are turned on again and we get this fluidity of releases coming through. Um, but we, so what I'm saying is there is we're going into the new season of, of films and, and usually September, October onwards, cinema programme, cinema season starts to lift up again. Yeah. Which is ideal for us. Um, so we're carrying on with Fisherman's Friends, One and All, which is the sequel to the first Fisherman's Friends. It's a lovely, quite charming, Cornish themed film about the um, the Cornish choir um, who ended up becoming huge from their sea shanties and <laughs> shenanigans. And um, this is the second um, second part of that, that film, that, that sort of story. Um, and the one nice thing about this film is that it features Imelda May, and most fans of of her, she's she's a great. Um, She's under the radar a little bit, but she's she's I think she's wonderful. Um, and she was this like rockabilly kind of um, uh, singer before, but she's kind of changed her look and changed her outlook and style a little bit um, through her own lived experiences. That I think that's influenced her to change. And she's taken part in some of the music musical direction in the film. Um, so that's Fisherman's Friends, one and all. Um, then, and I can, I will hold my hands up and be really um yeah cheeky on this but i have seen this a couple of weeks ago it's called it snows in benedorm mm-hmm. and benedorm for me i've got friends family that love going to that place and they're always saying you should go you should go you'll love it and i've got this kind of little bit of snobby i'm not you're, you're snobby basically you've, you've got friends and family saying you'll love benedorm and you're thinking what is their opinion of me well, yeah, however, <laughs> this film, it snows in Benidorm. We've all, we, you may have all seen Timothy Spall doing his, um, he's been doing a lot of promo around this. We all love Timothy Spall. What a brilliant actor, Timothy mm-hmm. Spall is. And he, um, he plays kind of, he's quite a dour character. He goes into early, he's sort of been forced into early retirement. And so he decides to pop over to Benidorm to go and visit his brother and to sort of just, do the fat a little bit, but his brother's gone missing. And mm-hmm. We don't know where he's gone. Ooh. And it's really, it's a bit of a love story. There's a and the backdrop of Benidorm. The point I make is they make it look, you know, the film, the director makes it look really, a really interesting place to go. See, so it is. So, it's, just, it's just you've got this hang-up about it for no reason whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's not a hang-up. It's <laughs> just, I'm just, it's, I, I, I think for me, because when I do try and get some time from off from work. I try to go to places that are very quiet and peaceful <laughs> and calm. And uh, Benidorm doesn't spell that out to me. But this film is is really it's an interesting take on Benidorm. Benidorm but it's always a it's a, it's a good platform for Timothy Spall as well. It's a it's a Spanish um, produced film. It's a Spanish it's sort of a Spanish film it's as, as such, but it's obviously everyone speaking English. But um, yeah, it's it, that's we've got that until 15 September, and then going on the theme of Spanish mm-hmm. which again. I've already seen this, and it's I highly recommend this film. Uh, it's called Official Competition. It's a big buzz going around it. Uh, it's starring Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz, and it is a total kind of um, mockery of the cinema industry and <laughs> the kind of the. Um, awards in you know the award side of things yeah uh, it's very funny it's uh, she's very neurotic in it she's got this amazing mass of curly hair in it she's so she's just so watchable Penelope Cruz um and yeah I would highly recommend that special competition and um we've got that right through till September the 7th on Wednesday and then we go into um from the 9th again we're going into the new Alan Cumming film, which has had a bit of buzz around it as well. And it's had some publicity on, um, they've been talking about it recently on Radio 2. Um, and it's about um, the guy, Brandon Lee. I don't mm-hmm. remember him who went back to school and pretended to be a 16-year-old. Oh, yeah, he was, he was well into his tw- 20s or 30s, wasn't he? I think he was in his 30s. And um, it's set in, it's a sort of bit of an odd story, set in Glasgow. And, um, and then it's all about what 
you have to you know the consequences of it and what happened. So Alan Cumming, what a great actor he is. Um, and so we've got that um, from the 9th of September as well. So a really nice um, selection of films. Um, but um, then I'm so, so happy to at last announce um, that we've got National Theatre Live back. Now, this is something that I know it, it is the mainstay of a lot of uh, people's viewing. And it's a great opportunity to see theatre. Uh, in, and shows that you wouldn't necessarily get touring the UK uh, and bringing them to Wolverhampton. And the, uh, the Lighthouse is the perfect venue, isn't it? The thing about it is, is that, uh, I mean, obviously, from, we were early adopters of satellite live stuff, in, you know, many, many years ago. And it's been a real lifeblood for independent cinemas, as you say. It's, um, it helps to, you know, it helps to bring in a different kind of audience but also it makes this, the productions that you're watching so accessible. Royal Opera House, the Royal Shakespeare Company, the National Theatre, the Royal Ballet, the, the, the Moscow Ballet, the Sydney Opera House, all these, what we would call, you know, we would call sort of, um, uh, I don't want to say high end, but I suppose it's, it's inaccessible to the normal person in the street mm. who can't afford to go to London, who can't afford... You know, they can't even get tickets to National Theatre because the members get them first. Very kind of exclusive. Mm -hmm. So when you can just phone up, book a ticket for 12, 14, 15 quid, and you can see real quality creme de la creme theatre, um, opera, ballet, you know, there's a market for it people want mm -hmm. to see it and, and and you get to see it in a different way as well in some ways at the stage you get a much closer view there's no absolutely. no bad no, there's no posts in the way you were in a cinema it's exactly the best way of viewing anything you get to see facial expressions you get to see nuances that you wouldn't see sat in you know in this in the up in the gods in, it's lovely to be in the collective theater you know in the theater collective yeah and, and to experience the essence of it all but I think the fact that it's opened up to so many, you know, groups and, and clusters of people that can't get, to, you know, get down to London. And, and obviously the older generation as well, who are the captive audience in the main of this kind of kind of um, content. Um, they don't want to be, they don't want to be travelling to London. It's mm -hmm. difficult. They're having to make really difficult decisions now. Post-Covid. Confidence is, you know, still questionable with certain yeah. people, you know, with certain groups of people. So having this on offer again now, it's been, um, it's been a long time. We've been negotiating because we've had to sort of, in terms of business, we've had to um, negotiate with natural peace, but it's, you know, back up and running. And we're so pleased. So for Sunday the 11th of September is our first screening of Jodie Comer's Prima Facci, which uh, we're going to have much to do about nothing coming up as well. And we'll be opening the floodgates then to to um, the National Theatre content, which um, keep an eye on our publicity. And you've got some exhibitions um, taking place too, haven't you? We have. We've got um, we've got one exhibition that's op it's opening now. It's opening now. It's called Paper Pulp, and it's by Gislaine Harrison, who's from she lives in Wolverhampton, which is French from uh, from France originally. And it's on our balcony gallery. It's not in the main gallery where I'm sat now. It's in the balcony gallery. And it's stunning. It's, it's sort of a mixture of paper pulled fabrics, embroidery, textiles. And it's her life's work on display. And she's, she's never, I don't think she's ever really exhibited before. And she's a wonderful person. And we really um, are really pleased to, to be in this exhibition right through to the 31st of September. Um, so come along. She's going to do a couple of um, talk to the artist sessions as mm -hmm. well, which yeah. will be on our website shortly, details for that. And you can access that exhibition space 2 o'clock till 8 o'clock, Tuesdays to Sundays. Um, but another, um, another thing that we've got coming up, which I'm very, really excited about this, one of, one of my favourite, favourite comedies is one called, the, it's called Detectorist. Uh, yes, I know the one. And, uh, yeah. And the guy that um, wrote the music score, his name is Johnny Flynn. He did the theme tune and, and he's a singer-songwriter. I think he's the brother or nephew of Jerome Flynn. Yeah. Robson and Jerome. Anyway. 
So there's a new film coming out called The Score, which I saw by, on a press screening last year, and it, it stuck in my mind, and I was thinking, I hope that gets a release, because it's such an interesting premise. It's actually sort of a <laughs> small-time crooks, uh, thief, thieves, horrible characters, uh, but, it's, uh, but it's a musical as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit of a love story and it's really funny in parts there's some really good dialogue in it and it is Will Poulter um, and Johnny Flynn's in it as well and he's done the music so but we've got the director coming for a Q&A oh, brilliant. Uh, Ma- Malachi Smith and he's coming down um, up from London actually um, on the uh, um, 13th of September um, bear with me I can come up the 15th only confirmed it yesterday bear with me on that um but it's all all the details will be on the website get the website for that one yeah i really want to push this film because it's such a an interesting premise where it's almost like blended it would appeal to mixed audiences who might think the musical part of it might jar them but then you sort of you do get into it (laughs) um and then there's it is quite violent in parts but it's it's an interesting kind of blend and I really want people to see it and support it. So I'm going to be leading. I'm, I'm going to be hosting the Q and A with the director. And uh, I think it's Thursday, the fifteenth of September. Uh, anyway, that will be confirmed on the website. So that's, that's we've got so much going on. I don't know how I managed to keep it all in my head. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, it's always on, busy. On Saturdays, I know. Saturdays we're starting our special. Once a month, we've been doing it for a few months now, where all our cinema tickets are five pound. Mm-hmm. We understand that there's lots of challenges. We're under a lot of pressure as, a, as an organisation, and we need as many people to come and use us for the city of Wolverhampton, for the cultural offer in the region. We need to be part of that. Um, but we also understand that affordability is going to be a question asked in all aspects of life, you know, from now on. And uh, so we've decided to um, offer all our cinema tickets like every Saturday, five pound for everybody. Mm-hmm. So it's you know we want people to come and support us, but we we know that people want to when they come here and understand what we do and get it, you know they'll they'll come back and they'll love us and become regulars, you know. Yeah, well, so, uh, it is a wonderful so we're place. Our bit. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's that's all good. It's amazing. Light-house.co.uk is the all-important website. What's the phone number? Because I can never remember this bit. Uh, 01902 925 We're not open on Mondays. Our box office is open. Um, try you know after after half twelve every all the other days of the week. And you can book online. You can book through the web uh, through the box office as I've just said, or you can pop in talk to us directly, have a chat with us on box office about what's coming up. Um, you know, we hire our space out for private, private hires, parties. We've got parties coming up over the next month. And you've got the market on the cobbles again soon, haven't you? Have. So 18th we've of September? 18th. Yeah. 18th of September, we've got stalls available. So if you want to, if you've got arts, crafts, if you, anything really, as long as it's not alcohol or cook, cooking food. Uh, it's just you know anything that you want to sell that we feel you know to give it a good mix of offer. We, this is going to be the third one, and we really want to persevere with this because we know it's it's a lovely atmosphere. It can link up with Medicine Bakery, which is the the artisan bakery that's across the cobbles from us, um, and just bring in some some book for um, create a, create a vibe. You know, create something going on in the city mm-hmm. well, on a regular basis. Yeah, and it, it it helps crafters as well, doesn't it? If you've got if you're a small trader, this gives you somewhere in the city centre where you can come to and sell nice and conveniently. So uh, that's that all works for everybody. Again, lighthivenhouse.co.uk for that. That's it, and you can book a stall. You can book a stall, which is twenty pound for the day, and um, you know that supports the lighthouse. It's not you know it just goes into the pot to keep us going. It's part of our social enterprise model. And yeah, you're right, supporting local match designer makers, artists, crafters. It doesn't have to be all about craft, it could be vintage, you could have you could have some stuff from the you know, from the house if you want to sell, you know, it's that whole essence of just supporting each other. Yeah, so if you've got old school uniform that you don't need, come along, mm-hmm. sell it on and uh, make some money to pay for the new school uniform and help somebody else out by getting something cheap. 
exactly. We've all got stuff that we know is collecting dust in our houses. And you sit there thinking, I need to get rid of that. There's another way you can do it. Mm -hmm. All sounds good. Right, as ever, lie-house.co.uk. You're going to do the phone number again, which is 01902. 925 9252 Kelly, always good to speak to you. Keep up the good work and I will see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. With nearly half of older Brits less than confident online, they could be losing out on more than £1,000 a year by not being tech savvy. Somebody who knows how to use a mouse pointer, if ever I saw somebody, is Gloria Honeyford, who joins me now. It's so nice to be with you after today, Jason. Great. Well, good to talk to you. So uh, t tell us more on this story, because uh, it is concerning when people who are in most need very often of some of the services we can get online aren't able to access them because they don't know how. Of all the people over 65, we're very reluctant or very insecure about going online. And of course, I'm obviously in that age bracket and beyond. Only just. And although I have had a computer and a website for years and I use it for work, for research documents, et cetera, but I was very reluctant, but I like the idea of learning something if I do it every day or every other day. I'm not panicked. I'm just learning something all the time. And it's like you could be saving money on clothes. It could be uh, cash on your bills. There's all sorts of ways that the internet can provide us with better value. Oh, totally. Because even in, uh, like Rip Off Britain, we actually talk to people by shopping around for deals. And I live by some of the advice that we give out. Um, because when you shop around, take house insurance. I saved uh, quite a lot of money this year by refusing to pay what the original um, insurance company was asking and shopped around and got a better deal. And I know that Angela and our, our Rip Off Britain, she did the same on car insurance by a ton of money, she saved. Um, so there is money to be saved online. Also, it doesn't matter whether you're buying clothes. For example, we have to buy all our own clothes. We don't get them all given to us. So I like to go online now and have a look at maybe jackets that are a bit different, you know, for telly. And sometimes they're much cheaper than the high street shops that I would normally go to. Travel, theatre tickets keeping in touch with your family and friends. So many advantages, which I've learned. But it's knowing who to turn to as well, because it, you can often get advice with the family. I, I, know, I know you and your grandkids spend time talking about this sort of thing, but it's not that easy for everybody. And it's also whether you know their families know how to get better deals online too. Well, that's right. I mean, you probably grew up, you know, with a computer lashed to your hip. Absolutely. Because you're young enough to do it. But, you know, my age group, we didn't. So we were still doing adding and subtracting and dividing. And um, so my grandchildren, you're right, they will say to me, glow, because they call me glow and say, glow, just get into the 21st century, just learn <laughs> how to do it. And of course, I'm very proud of myself now that I've agreed to take the plunge and, and learn. And, um, and also, I like keeping in touch with them. You know, during the lockdown, uh, there was a period of time when I, we could only see a small, uh, you know, group of two people, you can't even call it a group, um, and just my son, the two sons, and that was all we, could, we had. And so I realised that that connection with family and friends, you know, to actually see them as I'm looking at you today on Zoom, you know, it's a great advantage. And I, I like keeping up with them because, you know, Karen's children, um, they're in their 20s now and they're working. So they work hard from early morning to get them to place and, you know, travel. And then they're not finishing every seven or eight at night. Where am I going to fit in as a grandmother? I have to tap into their schedule. So it's learning all the time. And I'm pleased that I've taken the decision. Absolutely. Yeah. Although they do get to catch up with you on telly whenever they feel like it as well. That's the <laughs> advantage they do have. But I uh, want to ask the questions to them. <laughs> <laughs> but I say it, it is, though, great to be able to do this sort of stuff. And when it comes to benefits as well, those who do need to claim benefits, and in particular in, in the, the world right. we're running through at the moment, getting the best, best gas and electricity bills, uh, you know, there's lots of things to do online to help out there, whether you're, you're following yourself or one of your colleagues on TV who are advising us, or just using the internet to do your own searching, because it, it, it is often easy than you'd think well definitely when you shop around you definitely can save some money and you asked about getting in touch and we talked about family uh i could could turn to my sons for example could turn to my grandchildren but you know what is really good and if you've got a pen you might want to write this down with the charity that the vodafone have teamed up with it's called independentage.org and that's all you have to do in terms that comes up really quickly with vodafone it's a little bit longer it's vodafone um, .co.uk forward slash 
news center forward slash high digital. And just to repeat that high digital is that step-by-step -step easy program in order to learn. So not high tech. And it could be you get one of your family to get you to that point if you're just so uh, concerned about using it. But also uh, make sure you buy a machine that's going to help you. It's easier to do this sort of thing on an iPad or a tablet very often, or even that's a right. Chromebook, than it is maybe to go through the whole setup of a full computer. So there are lots of easier ways of doing it that can get you online quickly and allow you to be able to, to use this technology to really benefit and save yourself significant cash. It's not a bad investment, is it? Being online helps because it, it exposes you to the outside world, keeps you in touch with family and friends. It gives you a connection that makes you feel much better than sitting there on your own watching the telly. Absolutely. It's a, it's a brilliant way of doing things, being able to keep in touch. Even when we get the, the occasional internet glitches we're suffering as we're chatting today, which isn't <laughs> helping. It's, it, it's one of those things you just have to be brave, get through. And it's, it's about not being uh, you know, afraid to try and then say, with this work that's been done on High Digital, the foundation that uh, is working with Vodafone, you've got a great opportunity to be able to get yourself there and to build that confidence. And before you know it, you'll be an absolute whiz like your good self. Jason, you're absolutely right. I actually couldn't have said it better very much for uh, letting people know about this. And certainly you've got all the attachments there in terms of getting in touch with people for help. Absolutely. So become part of it. Uh, make sure you are getting yourself online, enjoying chatting with your friends and family, but also enjoying a bit of shopping. And you could have jackets as good as Gloria Honeyford. Well, there you go. What can I say? That does the job every time. <laughs> and, all, and also, Jason, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Oh, you, come on. You're pretty tech savvy. You've been at the uh, the cusp and getting on with everything for uh, probably longer than we both care to remember, having seen you do so many things, including, I mean, how many people get away with being on the mass Singer when they've just turned 21 as well? I mean, well, you were amazing you on that. There you go. I did it. Uh, one of my sons said to me, you know, Mom, it's a big, big challenge to do it. And I went, well, I like a challenge, you know, and I, I actually was the oldest person to have done it so far. And but I loved it because I like a challenge and the computer has been a bit of a challenge, but I like the fact that I'm doing it. And you may be interested to know that when I went to the Masked Singer, went to the studio, I had to wear a black sweatshirt that said, don't talk to me. And I had to wear black trousers, black shoes, black gloves. And a uh, uh, balaclava, you know, coming from Northern <laughs> Ireland, never thought I'd wear a balaclava. And also a black visor over that that had just a slit in it. And honestly, I could hardly see out of it. Nobody could see in. And I never saw a, a costume or a person, nobody around in the studio until the night of transmission, which was weeks later. So the, secrecy is the big thing. But I believe that. We all hide behind a mask sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. I say to you, how are you, Jason? You go, fantastic. Underneath it all, you're not. You're not that day or for whatever reason. We all wear that invisible mask. And so when I had that wonderful snow leopard outfit and big, a big mask, couldn't see anything anyway. Couldn't see the edge of the stage. <laughs> I, I knew there were dancers behind me, couldn't see them. The only people I could see, couldn't see the audience, were four people who were the judges. That's all I could see, just the images not even clear. So in a way I was singing to myself inside the mask. So it wasn't really nerve wracking. I just mm -hmm. sort of did what I do in the bath every day. Well, you so, did it absolutely amazingly. It was wonderful. I had no idea it was going to be you. And I'd spoken to you a couple <laughs> of weeks before. I was really disappointed you didn't let on then either, but there we go. No, so, nobody knew. <laughs> who knows? You, you, you'll you be doing either Big Brother or dancing or something next. Uh, not the there, dancing. No, I can know. guarantee you. That. <laughs> That'd be a giggle if you, you, you'd love it. But well, give us that web address again where we can get online so everybody can do something else that's outside their comfort zone. Okay, so it's vodafone.co.uk forward slash news centre forward slash high digital and the actual uh, charity, which is really, really lovely. It's independentage.org. That's all, independentage.org. Go and get the details. That's what counts. Gloria Honeyford, yes. always good to speak to you. Thank you for joining us. And we Thank look forward to seeing much, you soon. Thank you very much, Jason. Bye-bye bye bye now. Ring again. Oh, no, we didn't call each other on the phone. Get in touch by Zoom again. <laughs> <laughs>
Kuzu has had an absolutely fantastic summer. It may be approaching its end as the kids go back to school, but it is still open for business with loads going on, particularly through into the October half term. Will Doral is here with me now to tell me more. Hello, sir. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. We've got nice weather today, haven't we? Uh, fantastic. And we are stood in the Laura Keat enclosure at the moment. We now, are. There's, there's one behind us just over there. It seems to be uh, just sort of relaxing and chilling at the minute. He, he is. I think he's trying to work out um, if, there's, uh, if there's any holes. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we haven't left any. No that'd, escape that'd, plan. Yeah, that'd be awkward. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, as you said, quite, we uh, had quite a few stood here until literally we decided to start the interview, and then they um, they've gone they've gone back inside. Well, well they did they did say not to work with animals or children. Don't this they? is it, so, and uh, you, it. you get both down here. But that is part of the glory of what you do. That's and uh, you're having a great time with uh, say everything that goes on, the animal experiences that you you share, and uh, it, it's such an educational experience for kids. It is, yeah. So we we really sort of try and uh, focus on that. Is um, you know obviously uh, making sure the kids have a have a good time and a fun time, but also that it's, it's educational as well um, and uh, yeah I mean obviously we've got sort of you know 15 16 talks to take place each day which um, you know we try and combine a bit of humor and, uh, and, and and fun into that but whilst making sure that that message of conservation gets across to all ages from you know two to you know 100 mm -hmm. and with the work that you do around special events so the summer is obviously a vitally important time and a bit great to see people queuing to get in because they know that they're gonna have a good time down here yeah it is it's definitely it's always always nice that way round rather than the opposite isn't it <laughs> Um, but um, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, the, the the weather has done us a, a huge favour this summer. Um, although it's been a little bit too hot at times, mm -hmm. um, but even so, um, if we're, we're British. We've, we've, we've got to complain about it. We'll, be, we'll be stoic in some ways <laughs> exactly, and, and whinge in others. But I mean, it's, it's been great for someone like the Laura Keats because they're from a, a hot climate, yeah, and uh, so they probably absolutely loved every minute of it. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, do the furry creatures coped too. Most of them are coped absolutely fine. Some of them um, that are more used to sort of Arctic climbs. Um, mm -hmm. our, our reindeer, he, he, he struggled a little bit. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, some of the, like the skunks and things like that, they have sort of thicker coats. But, um, but again, you know, everything that we've got here was, was bred in the UK. So even though they might be from different climates, they're, they're also you know, used to our weather as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got a team looking after them to make sure they're treated in the right way during those different that, times. That's exactly it. And trust me, um, yeah, a lot of the time, the animals are cooler than the staff were, <laughs> uh, which is... Uh, 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 yeah, it was, uh, was, was sometimes a bit of a, a cause of amusement. Uh, so, I mean, with October on the way, it's going to be a little bit cooler then, and you've got the October half term, which means, again, another busy time as all the kids are off school coming down here. Yeah, definitely, and, um, I mean, that's really when we sort of, uh, um, you know, it's, it's the Halloween time of year, isn't it? And um, uh, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of stuff with our dinosaurs this year, and, um, um, you yeah, know, fingers crossed they stay where they should do, and, you know, we don't have any dinosaur escapes. This could be the issue um, with the dinosaurs, isn't it? They, they, they cause problems sometimes. Well, there is, and, you know, there is, I mean, but let's be honest, there's a whole entire movie franchise based around that so uh, you know if we can tap into a little bit of that i'm not going to complain yeah, but, but um, it's great seeing them as they as you arrive though as soon as you, you're in the queue there's yeah. a dinosaur a triceratops you know, sort of nodding hello to you yeah exactly um, i mean we did consider putting a t-rex there but we thought that might be a bit too scary for some of the younger mm -hmm. uh, young customers but we have got the t-rex cafe just inside we do just inside <laughs> and, uh, and we do we do have a big t-rex elsewhere um but yeah we figured having it right at the main entrance gate might be a bit too much but um yeah we're certainly doing a lot with the dinosaurs over um over halloween um, probably, um, oh, well, we are going to be open sort of later hours as well. So mm. doing a, a bit of what we did last year, which was diners in the dark. Uh, you know, being able to walk around and see the dinosaurs all lit up in the dark and having some uh, live actors out and stuff like that. And uh, of course, we're going to be doing one of our um, uh, you know, very popular cinema nights as well, um, which we haven't quite yet decided the day, but it is going to be during that that half term week. So yeah, just keep an eye on our social media. Absolutely, uh, socials and of course online as well. And I tell you, you know, get hold of your tickets. Give us all the details on how people actually book. Yeah, so they can uh, book through our website, which is www.who dash zoo.com that's who with a h double o um or they can again do it through our facebook page um which is uh, just uh, who zoo and dinosaur world on facebook so do check those out go along there and, and and see about all the events that are happening but get involved have, come down have a great time and great value for money too and a whole day where you can enjoy the uh, the animal experience whether it be something that's been extinct for a few millennia or uh, the, the real ones which we're enjoying and you're conserving well exactly that's it you know and um yeah like we said we we, we try and make sure that there's something there for for all the family, never mind sort of what age you are, what you're in, uh, interested in. Um, you know, if you like animals, you like dinosaurs. We um, we like to think that we're sort of ideal. Works. It's all good. But have a brilliant time with it, and uh, I know that uh, you, you're going to be kept busy uh, looking after your visitors today. Um, are you doing any talks yourself? Um, not today. Um, no, I say not today. Actually, I haven't done any all summer. Um, yeah, you've been working anywhere else. I've, I've been I've been I've been very busy with boring stuff like paperwork. And um, tending to dinosaurs. And tending to dinosaurs. Yeah, definitely. That, that's um, your, your yeah, own that's own, yeah, exactly. But thanks. For 
for letting me come down here. Thanks for a great time. And uh, looking forward to uh, maybe nipping back during half term. And yes, uh, because animal experiences, though, one thing we do need to plug there, how do people book animal experiences? Yeah, so again, book the animal experiences through our website. Yeah. Uh, they're very, very popular and very, very busy. So mm -hmm. um, I'll just to give you an idea at the moment, weekdays we're booked up until sort of mid September and weekends until sort of mid October. So you do need to book those well in advance. Okay. Book them through our website again, which is www who hyphen zoo.com. Well, I think that's all the housekeeping done. I'm go off and enjoy the animal experiences down Fantastic, here. Fantastic, definitely. Yeah. Will, thank you for joining us. Cheers, Jason. Thanks. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me back with episode 690 next week. I'll see you then. Ta-ra for now. Goodbye from the milk bar. 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 Yeah. Goodbye from the milk bar. Yeah.